It begins to dawn on you that everything you have done so far might have been a colossal waste of time. Explain the colossal waste of time. You still have no idea where, or even when you are. But at least you were able to tell that you were sent here to receive a warning. Judging by the broken porthole, as well as the incredible amount of black goo around here, you can only assume that if your efforts regarding the water theft were to fail, that there will be some seriously catastrophic consequences. Namely, everything going to hell, as evident here. You didn't see any water around here. You secretly hope that this isn't going to be the end result if you were to succeed, either. Taking the life out of something to bring back the dead isn't your shtick. If this whole thing was done on purpose, you'd rather not meet the subject responsible for it. Dump all the black gunk you're carrying off the edge here. No point carrying a full tank when there's plenty of it all around you. Probably best that you empty your suit here, instead of waiting to do it when you get back to your own waterworks. You aim one of your gloves over the edge. Same way in, same way out. If you're going to get out of here, you'd best find some water. Assuming any exists in this place. You doubt there's any water left in this place at all. You'd be pretty screwed right now, if you didn't have the foresight to bring some with you before going into unknown territory. This is the water from the puddle you arrived in. You collected it in one of the few spatial sample vials your suit comes equipped with by default. So, is there anything else interesting around? See anything or any of the other visual things you can switch to? Well, there is this porthole. It doesn't look too beaten up, but it's incomplete. Even with a smashed up console, you could probably still get it up and running if you were to find the missing piece. Unfortunately, the pieces of a porthole are very heavy. If the missing piece isn't nearby, then you doubt you'd have much luck lodging it all the way back over here. Other than that, there is nothing of interest nearby. When you jumped down the hatch, you slipped and fell into the pile of black goo. You swam to the walkway that you saw down below, and made your way up to the top of this giant, cylindrical-looking thing, filled with more goo. Since the porthole is here, you're going to assume that this is a reservoir. If this is built anything like your waterworks, then there should be a place for water to drip down into the reservoir from above. This looks like it. If there was no water left in this place, it would be tangled up there, in those pipes. It seems to be completely plugged up. Plugged up by... what? Some kind of black... Oh god. That's new. X-rayed? It's probably best to take a look at the insides of this thing and see if you can figure anything else out. You set your X-ray on high. That's really unusual. You thought that this looked like some sort of upside-down tree or something. But what kind of tree had a spinal column? It descends from deep within the pipe, down to that impenetrable ball on the bottom. This isn't making sense. If this thing is made out of black goo, any water on those pipes should have stopped something like this from growing in a place like that. You max out your X-ray to see if you can take a better look inside that ball. Nope. Completely blocks all X-rays, no matter how much you're focused in on it. Kinda like your suit. You're completely clueless as to what's going on here. You could probably get rid of all this black goo if you use the water you took, but you really, really need it for something else. This is a problem. You'll have to figure out some way to try to dispose of this stuff once you get back to the waterworks. Sever the spinal column. How are you supposed to do that? You don't have anything to throw at it, and there is no way you can get up there without diggers of puddles. You also came here via your dimensional hopper ability, which means that even if you do make it back to the waterworks without a hitch, the actual probability that you'll even be able to find your way back to this place is very, very low, as you have no control over your actual destination. You can pick where you're headed with normal puddle transport, but the range is rather limited. As far as you know, you might not even be on the same planet anymore. If you want to do something, you've got to do it here and now, with what you've got around you. Low gamma it. Hmm. The gamma rays are able to slightly pierce through that thing. You're still not entirely sure what you're looking at, so you're going to max out the strength. <sighs> okay. What is this symbol doing here so soon? 
you switch to one of your suit's status screens. Your suit is already low on power, just from using the extra set and max. Damn it, you need to recharge if you even want to continue using the gamma setting. Why would anyone think that emitting heavy electromagnetic radiation would have any consequences? Nothing has even burst into flame. Yet. <sighs> oh well. If you keep it low, you should be able to use the X-ray setting for a little while longer. You won't dare use the maximum gamma unless you were plugged into something. If your suit runs out of power, you will lose the use of all of your abilities. Plus the sheer weight of your suit will utterly encumber you. It'll make things really difficult later on, so you should play it safe now. Can you trace the spinal column and see where it goes along the pipe? Maybe you can see where that spine leads and whether or not it connects to something else. Crap, that's a lot of pipes. You can't tell where this is going. You can't reach the tree. You can't access the porthole. You're getting really, really frustrated. Some bullshit detour this was. You can see all this black crap everywhere. But that's about it. There's no water in here at all. Hell, for all you know, this place could have been deserted for years. That's probably why all this goo is here, nobody bothered to clean it up. This place was always dead, and there was no reason you should be worried about it. You wasted all your energy for nothing. All I get to show from bumbling around in this place is a stupid tree with a friggin' spine. It was absolutely pointless to come here. You're going to head back and get your mission over with. Damn it. Zoom out a bit so we can see just what the heck is that. A dead you? You in this possible future? Oh. Um... You know, it probably make more sense if that was you from some alternative timeline. But unfortunately, this probably isn't the case in this situation. At least you somehow met up with the subject responsible for the station. He... doesn't look too good. What with the chunks taken out of him, the severed arm and the heart pulled through the chest. His suit's heavily damaged, but still seems to be intact to a degree, which is good, you guess. Uh, you're having trouble thinking of something to say. Greet him with an awkward wave. You pull off a convincing awkward wave. Having your arm being the only moving object in this frame accomplishes this rather nicely. He returns the favor by pointing at you with his stab and lurching forward a little bit. You're not entirely sure what he's trying to accomplish, but you're not exactly one to speak either. Point at the harpoon. Do you need help with that? You inquire about the harpoon, which is no doubt lodged between several of his vital organs. But he just kinda keeps doing what he was doing earlier. This isn't going anywhere quick. You should take the initiative. Perhaps a scan is in order. Once you figure out who this guy actually is, you've got to do something with him. He's kinda out of it at the moment, and definitely looks like he needs help. At least you think he does. You guess he could be some sort of zombie, but everyone knows they don't exist. Unless someone invented them, in which case you wouldn't know. You don't keep tabs on this sort of things. Scan him. Or the tree. Make sure there isn't anything sneaking up behind you quickly. You switch your visor to Recon and take a good look at him. His suit is showing up as something you can scan. You do so. This guy is Subject 10. His name is Serge and he was assigned to this area, aptly named Derelicts. Like you, his suit's rather rounded out, except that it's taken a hit to mobility to strengthen up spatial distortion. His suit's also turned to shreds, but his amalgam is still in one piece. That means that he's still got a hold of any water he may or may not have previously acquired. He... he's also dead inside his suit. You probably should have addressed this issue first. So... There is such a thing as a zombie. You suppose you should be concerned, but you're just really interested in this development. Oh well, done to business. If he's truly really dead, he shouldn't have any intelligence left to actually make any use of his suit's abilities. All you need to do to escape is to just walk slowly in the other direction. Although you must admit, getting the M.M. Killing from his back is pretty tempting. Depending on how much water he's collected, you'd easily be able to return with twice as much water as you were originally meant to hold. That would really be something. You also take a quick look behind you, to make sure there isn't anything else that could get in your way. No. Nope. Pretty clear. Wait. He ain't waving his hand. He's pointing behind you. 
you just established that there's nothing of immediate threat behind you. Oh well. You look again because you're paranoid like that. Yeah, there's nothing there. Broken console, some goo. Hang on. Where'd the goo go? It must be invisible to X-rays or something. You set your visor back to normal, with low illumination. That's better. You can actually see everything now. Alright, Serge, it's time. Oh my god, that's not a zombie! Run behind it and yank out the harpoon and use it! You quickly strike behind the goo thing, grip the harpoon, and begin pulling. It, it's really stuck fast. But if you pull hard enough, you might be able to get it out. One final yank, and you acquire Serge's harpoon. The harpoon is a versatile aquatic weapon. Primarily used to capture large animals, these things have all kinds of uses, with the most obvious one being to violently tear apart the flesh of the greater beings. Each subject had a custom issued weapon, which when in hand makes them several times more dangerous. These weapons can be further combined with the suit's harpoon ability to practically transform one's suit into a killing machine. Except uh, this isn't your harpoon. You have no idea how to use it. You could probably stab something with it for a while, but for the moment you don't see a way to wield this thing the way it's meant to be wielded. See if you can check out his water pack while it doesn't know where you are. Before it can turn around, you thrust the harpoon into its back and sever the MM unit from the rest of the suit. You acquire a Sturgis MM unit. Well, sort of. It's still attached by a big black rope of goo. At least you can see the readings. He's managed to get enough water to amount to about a sixth of what you've currently managed to get, but when this thing's maximum capacity is taken into account, it's still a lot of water. What's these greater beings you talked about? Oh, nothing in particular. You were just referring to anything that was generally really big and rather difficult to take out for yourself. Is it really all that different from your harpoon? Aren't these things like a standard issue? You're not entirely sure, to be honest. As far as you know, they all look relatively similar, but how they operate is drastically different. You could say the only thing these harpoons have in common is that they're unique. It's probably their biggest strength. Smack the glowy thing off its head. Two more slashes and you completely sever both the MM unit and the weird glowing stalk on its head. You figure you should really give this monster a name, but it's going to quickly become irrelevant. The thing's too slow to react to you, so you might as well get all this over with. Forget about all this zombie harpoon business. Perform part of MC Hammers can touch this. Being the slick guy that you are, you grab your things and hammer slide past the thing. It ain't touching you. Now, how will you make your exit? You should find a way to neutralize the goo. That way, we can check out Serge's suit. As far as I know, water is the only way to truly neutralize the goo. If you mix them together and there is more water than goo, the goo will dissolve. However, if there is more good than water, the water gets absorbed instead. It requires a serious surge of water to completely neutralize large amounts of goo, whereas smaller amounts will wash off relatively quickly. Unfortunately, the only accessible water you have on you is in this vial, which you need in order to escape. There is a way to get the water directly out of the NM unit, without interfacing with the porthole. But the process is very chaotic and destructive and frankly not something you'd want to ever do if you had concern for anything within 5 mile radius. Hell, you're not even completely sure what will even work on this stuff once it's solidified. The stall you cut off of Serge's suit doesn't even seem like it's came from the black goo. It isn't trying to eat your hand off, and your suit isn't absorbing it either. It just kinda stays there, glowing ominously. Did you mean to take the glowy thing with you? Uh, actually, they kinda look like flowers. You thought could be able to give them to the girl, so you'd be able to win over her heart, and then persuade her to leave you and the other guys alone. Yeah, all your relationships has been complete disasters. This is probably why. You're completely embarrassed by how unbelievably shitty this idea is. Still, you've never seen anything like this glowing thing before, and you're going to take it with you just so you can get a better look at it. Maybe run over to the offices and use the equipment there to find out what it is. Nothing should really go wrong. There's an incinerator near the offices. If all else fails, you can burn the living daylights out of it. 
toss emergency water vial onto the ground and jump into the puddle. You can't wait to get out of here. All of this dark green is really starting to get depressing. You use your dimensional hopper ability on the puddle and jump in. It's a tight squeeze, but you fit without any trouble. Now we just hope you're taken back to the waterworks. It'd be a real shame if you had to break out of the small container, or came out on top of the descending meteor. You're finally here! Thank God! That was the most boring and eventful trip you've ever been on! Ask the man if he would like to come with you. You both get out of the crane's cockpit and you ask the worker if he'd like to accompany you. He politely declines, stating that he's going to stay and watch over the crane so that nobody tries to break it again. He'll give you a lift back to sample storage or the reservoir if you ever need it, though. Thank the man and exit. What were we doing again? You thank him for his help and head off. Now, what were you doing again? What were you doing again? You originally came here to yell at whoever was in charge so that you could figure out what's going on with all the water. But now you're all caught up in this plot with those crazy water guys. Oh well. All you really want is for water to be supplied to your house again. Helping these workers out might help you reach that goal a little faster. You should go meet them and see if they have anything for you to do. But first, you ought to look around and get a feel for this place. Pretty straightforward. There's a hatch in front of you, and behind that is a rather large overhead door. To your right are a few normal doors, and next to them is a closed panel. The place seems a little scratched up. The worker comments that a lot of machinery passes through this area, and it's worn the place down a little over the years. Offices. Finish loading, 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 loading. Looks like you arrived a little too early. The office has finished loading, but you didn't miss anything too significant. I looked through the window on the doors. It's pitch black inside. You can't see anything. At least the doors aren't locked, though. You could go inside and try looking for a light switch. Try the first door on your right. The windowless one. You're getting a bit tired of darkness anyways, so you try the plain door on the right instead. Not very excited, this one. Half-heartedly untie worker. You untie the third worker and separate him from his mop. You really don't want to be stuck in time midgets all day, but you'd rather not come off as a complete douchebag to the guys you're trying to cooperate with. The worker is very grateful for you freeing him. He introduces himself as a light janitor, in charge of keeping part of the office's area tidy. That is, he was in charge until a big square guy took him completely by surprise tied him to his mop and drew him in that closet. He turns around and grabs his helmet, which was behind him. He tells you he probably isn't going to be very useful, but he'll help you in any way needed. He's rather handy with his mop. Speaking of his mop… Use broom to clean up room. He asks if you're aware that you can't buff out a large scratch in the metal floor with a dry mop. You tell him yes. Hand him the mop and inform him that you just had to do something about that scratch. You hand him the mop and apologize. He doesn't say anything. Ask if he can turn on the lights in the rooms. He says that all you should really need to do is find the light switch. You both head inside. It's still pretty dark in here, but you can hear the worker fumbling along the wall to your left, presumably looking for a light switch. There we go. There isn't much immediately in front of you, but the worker comments that the offices are really quite large and go way back. There's all kinds of stuff that lies ahead. You don't know. Frankly, this smells kind of fishy. No, really. This whole place smells like fish. Fishy fish. You're wondering why. The worker doesn't know either. Explore room. But avoid the fish smell. You can't avoid the smell. It's pretty much everywhere. It's also pretty freaking strong. You could probably go back outside and check that area out a little more later, but you should take a look around here first. Track down suspicious aquatic scent. The smells most likely coming from the same direction you're headed, so you might as well head over there. Oh man, shit must have gotten real in here. Everything is so smashed up and broken to pieces. There's little bits of broken glass scattered about, as well as a computer tower, parts of a swivel chair and a few broken cubicle partitions. Little bits of goo, too. Where is everyone? 
could we get a quick inventory and mood check, please? I get the feeling something nasty is coming up. You're feeling pretty straightforward. You've got access to the health water bottle, with the rest of your items leaning towards the blue end of the spectrum. This isn't good, because if you ever need to use any of your items in a fight, your mood will most likely be in the red, making everything unusable. Save the shotgun, should some miracle occur. Inspect the broken pieces on the floor, like that little ball. This looks like a wheel taken off the bottom of a swivel chair. The box in the corner looks to be some sort of computer, and the glass on the ground looks like it used to be a bunch of beakers and test tubes. Investigate the pointy object in the top right corner. You're not sure what this thing is? It looks like the end of a harpoon. You're going to take a closer look. Oh wait, it's just some workers with their weapons pointed at you, oh god! Slick, be Jose. Be who now? You can't just be someone you're not. Although you do wonder where everyone is right now, you should probably tell them about all that shit you just saw. Oh hey, there's a. Oh. Oh dear. Worker, keep kicking ass. Whoop. Looks like the worker saw you come in, and is getting ready to redirect his ass kicking from Jose to you instead. You don't have time for this. Worker, use triple kick. The worker jumps at you. Looks like he might be going for a kick. You successfully parry all of his kicks. You can't really hurt him while he's at it like this, but he doesn't have a weapon, so he can't do too much to you either. Slick, take worker by one of his legs while he's still spinning. He isn't spinning, but you're still able to nab one of his legs mid kick. You swiftly tuck the worker into the porch you set up for him. Twinkly. And that's enough of that. I'm only gone for 10 minutes, and you're already getting your ass kicked. Shut up. Seriously, it's been like three times today. Shut up! He took me by complete surprise, okay? Somehow managed to squeeze his fat ass behind the soda machine. Oh. Well, still. You should have been able to take him. You should have been less of an idiot and remembered to tie up their legs. Okay, okay, sorry. Forget about it. There is something more important that needs our attention. What's up? We gotta get the other guys and get out of here. What do you mean? We're packing up the equipment and leaving the area. But we're not done yet. Are you sure that's a good idea? Tubbs has never left a job unfinished before. If you were to quit early, well, Let's just say, you'd better be still willing to deliver what you promised to him. You know, if you're the kind of guy that likes his body in one piece. Don't worry, we're not giving up. We just need to relocate to a safer location for a while. But this is where all the water is! I know, but I've got a hunch we're doing a lot more damage than what we think we're doing by staying here. What do you mean by that? Well, we can't just steal all the water of the world, right? Even though we'll set this place and the surrounding area of dry for a little while, with a little time, all the water will come back, through rain and whatnot. And your point is... Uh, you know the blood goo, right? Yeah, that stuff is really nasty. Well, um... In addition to getting as much water as I can, I've got to find a place to dump all the goo I brought with me. Yeah, what else is new? Just dumping all of it down in the basement is starting to look like a really, really bad idea. Why? You know what you're doing, right? I don't know shit about the black goo. I've been observing it, and I have reason to believe that it's going to be incredibly harmful. Seriously, we're pretty much killing every living thing for as far as the pipes let out of this place go. Hmm. Well, I trust your opinion. If that's the case, then we should get moving. However, I'm not sure we'll be able to get anywhere. Why is that? Tubbs doesn't give a damn about anyone's life, and all Flush does is suck up to Tubbs. You'll have to have a pretty good reason for moving, otherwise Tubbs isn't gonna budge. Damn. You're right. Oh well, we'll think of something in a bit. Here's what we're doing now. My suit's low on power, I'm going to recharge the repair module. It should only take a few minutes. In the meantime, I want you to practice using your compression cistern. You haven't been using it properly, and it's seriously showing. Once I'm done, we'll find Flush and then look for Tubbs in the offices. He's been spending most of his time there. Yeah. Alright, 
It'll be just a few minutes. God damn, you seriously need to learn how to use that thing. At this rate, you'd be better off surrendering. Hell, on the first impression, that would seem like the only thing you're good at. I'm not French! Oh, uh, what? Nothing. You hop into the repair module. It detects surges and in it. If you fix yourself up while it get it on you, the repair module will merge it with your suit, both increasing your water capacity and giving you more points for suit optimization. You proceed and everything is reset back to default, except now you have 5 extra points to spend, for a total of 15. You currently have 2 points in damage resistance, 2 points in mobility, 1 point in spatial distortion, and you have 15 extra points to put wherever you wish. Where will they go? Just get 5 in spatial distortion, 6 in damage resistance, and keep your mobility where it was. Sounds good. You haven't gotten hurt since you've upped your mobility, so focusing on the other things doesn't sound half bad. Of course, putting points in spatial distortion brings two new abilities online, namely your weapon ability and an upgraded version of your puddle teleporting ability. You'll take a better look at those when you're done with repairs. Let's do this! You can't see a goddamn thing with this bag over your head! After someone took you by surprise, you were knocked down, kicked a bunch of times, picked up, carried somewhere and tied to a chair. The only thing you know is that you were tied up by the very people who you were trying to help. And that alone is enough to thoroughly piss you off. You're hoping for their sake that they take the bag off before you know through it in frustration. That at least give them some time to explain what's going on. Duck your head so the bag falls off. You slide down into a chair and out from under the bag. It just falls off. Perfect. You are currently tied to a chair. There's a plain wall in front of you. The chair has a very high back, which prevents you from seeing what's behind you. You hear sizzling noises, as well as a few people whispering in the background. Your mice and crowbar are gone. Your mood is currently in the orange, an area in which you decided to be completely moronic and store absolutely nothing, except that goddamned shotgun, which you know by now is just there to tease you. You're having trouble thinking clearly. You've also decided that you're going to hunt down and beat the living shit out of the source of that fishy smell. Store the ropes in your orange slot. That idea is stupid enough just to work. You store the coil of rope and uh, a couple pairs of underwear in your mood ring. Take the shotgun out of the orange slot. You're probably going to need it, and it's not going to be easy to get out again. You can't reach your shotgun. For some reason, you're not angry enough. Calm down and think. Where has acting on impulse got you so far? Tied to a chair is where it's got you. Calm down? Calm down? The reason all this happened is because you were a cop! You're absolutely sick of this. Be nice. Calm down. Be happy. Enjoy life. No! You tried that. Many, many times. And it always ends with someone trying to take advantage of you. No. Since then, you've learned how to fight. Since then, no one has crushed you and no one fucking will. This is bullshit. And take the shotgun out. Hopefully you can put it in an easier to reach spot later. You just said that you can't reach the friggin' shotgun! Just stand up and turn around. Why? What's over there? Wait. Is that what you think it is? 